there's a very beautiful yet extremely simple mantra of the Devi. I want all of us to chant this mantra together to invoke the Devi because we can't enter into any process without her grace. So before we chant the mantra together, I would like to say a few things on the mantra so that we all understand the profoundity of this simple mantra. So as every mantra begins with the chant of Om. So it says Om Sarva Mangala Mangalya. I'll repeat this line before moving forward. So the salutation, Om and salutation to the one Sarva Mangala Mangalya. Salutation to the one whose auspiciousness in all that is auspicious. Meditate on this. Salutations to the one whose auspiciousness in all that is auspicious. Shive Sarvartha Sadhike to the consort of Shiva. Sarvartha Sadhike has a very beautiful meaning. Means in a simple way it would mean the one who is accomplisher of all the objectives all the pursuit but there is another deeper meaning of that also that salutation to the mother Sarvartha Sadhike who makes sure that all the four stages of human pursuits are being achieved what are the four stages of human pursuit the Dharma is the first stage of human pursuit the earth which is the material wealth is the second pursuit the karma which is the enjoyment the sense pleasure of all that we can experience through the senses and moksha the final liberation from the cyclic movement of life and death so all these four key pursuit of human existence the mantra says we salute to that we invoke that Devi who makes sure that all these four objectives are also accomplished profound that's the second one and the third sutra the mantra says Sharanya Trambake Gauri Sharanya means the one who is the source of all the refuge Triambake means the three eyed ones that's a literal meaning but that also means the one who is the who is the mother of all the three worlds you know we say that in the in the Indian tradition we use this word a lot Tina Loka the three worlds the first word is the Bhumi the 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 plane of existence of earth the first Loka the second Loka is the Antariksh the space the Loka of the space the plane of existence of the space and the third loka is of the heavens so you have earth as as first realm of existence then you have heaven as the third realm of existence and you have the space as the second realm of existence so the mantra says the one who is the lord who is the owner who is the mother of all the three worlds of existence this can also triambake can also be translated into the one who governs all the three energies what are the three energies the rajas the the energy of activity the sattva the energy of absolute balance and tamas the energy energy of inertia so the mother we are invoking the mother who is also the lord also the mother of the three energies she governs all these three energies can also be interpreted Triambake can also be interpreted as the mother who governs all the three phases of time as we experience in human realm what are the three phases of time the past is phase one the present is phase two and the future is phase three so the mother who also governs all the three phases of time as we experience as human beings Triambake Sanskrit is a beautiful language. Each word has multiple connotations. 
when used in a different perspective the meaning of the word changes so triambake can be explained into these multiple ways gauri the literal meaning of the word gauri sharanya triambake gauri the literal meaning of the word gauri is the fair skinned one <laughs> one would wonder why why would they say why would they make this dis- distinction between fair skin and not fair skin well that's not what the meaning of the word hair here the word gauri means the one who emanates light one whose entire body is the body of light that mother we are invoking the last line says narayani namastute namastute narayani who is the again it in a different way of saying narayani who is the better half who is the who is the uh how do i say narayani is the better half of narayana and narayana is the lord of the world so in different words we saying the same things through this mantra and then namastute means we bow down so we bow down to this devi to this mother that's the meaning of this this beautiful chant devi the mother of universe how in the human realm how we experience things at the basic level of our existence the world as we know it moves progresses expands when the two forces come together the male force and the female force when they come together the world begins the the movement of the world starts but this word female in english is very beautiful because if you see female the male is already incorporated in this world so which means the just just looking at the word female the male is already part of it she is already holding the male in her and there is often a debate who is supreme <laughs> can we not look at the word and see that well we'll explore during these three weeks but at the cosmic scale we the entire world of form the entire world of manifestation comes from the mother because she is the womb without the womb no form can exist without the womb no form can manifest itself so at the cosmic level she is the womb from where everything is emerging it's very beautiful that every human being connects to her connects to this devi shakti in different forms in different rupas i'm sure you've heard about shri ramakrishna paramhansa one of a great yogi vedanti tantric devotee you know these ad- adjectives are too less to describe ramakrishna paramhansa so he connected to this energy as the mother as the mother energy as kali you know rama connects with this energy as as his beloved sita shiva connected with this energy as parvati his consort krishna connected with this energy as as somebody as as a companion he can dance with as radha and she is also she can also takes the form of kali the, the the aggressive one to destroy all the evil in us she she takes that rupa that form also the other word to describe her is also a very beautiful word called shakti the english parallels of this word shakti would be power yeah but actually shakti is not just power that's that's a limited understanding when we use this word shakti the root word for shakti is called shak and the meaning in sanskrit i'm saying the root word for the word shakti is shak 
S H A K. And the meaning of this word shak is the one who can do, or or let's say can do. So the meaning, the literal meaning of the Sanskrit word shakti is the one who can do. So shakti is that that power, that energy, that source which can do, which can which can manifest, which can create forms, which can do anything. Yeah. And when I say anything, is literally anything. She can do the creation as the mother. She can also sustain this creation, and she can also destroy this creation. When I'm saying this creation, could be any creation. So all three possibilities of creation, sustenance, and destruction exist in her as Shakti. Yeah. I thought these are words that we use often. It's important that we know. the meaning of these word you know in india there is a whole tradition called the shakta tradition yeah these are the followers of shakti as energy as the mother as the form as as something which is beyond everything for the shaktas the devi the mother is the supreme there is no god there is no divinity there is no purusha there is no consciousness which is supreme than her she is the whole of of this process called life yeah we build a whole tradition on that there is a beautiful story i would like to share since we are entering into this zone uh, some of you might be aware of this story but i think this is really beautiful story so i thought i'll share with you also to set the tone and to show you the profundity of her her presence the story is of shiva and sati sati is the daughter of king called daksha sati is in a uh, deep affinity love with shiva she wants to marry shiva but shiva as we know is wild she would be spending months and months together at the burning ghats at the cremation grounds he would be days together he won't eat he's a wild being as the story in the mythology goes he would sometime make friends with the shavas the the dead bodies all the wild creatures are are his friends are his playmates and in some senses he is also a loner he is a recluse he puts the bhasma which is uh, what's the hindi english for bhasma uh rock Uh, what is ra ash yeah so he he smears his entire body with ash all the time extremely wild being so sati who is in love with this wild being her father who is a king does not approve of this marriage but somehow sati convinces the father to marry shiva and somehow he she also you know convinces shiva to marry her she has a she has a tough job one side uh, making sure that shiva agrees another side making sure the father agrees she marries shiva but as we know the father is very displeased with this marriage but anyhow marriage has happened sati goes lives with shiva now the father daksha is hosting a big party big uh, religious festival a yajna uh, a fire ceremony he invites all the devas all the gods as the story goes he invites everybody but he does not invite shiva and the sati because he just want to kind of show his disrespect for for shiva because he is not pleased with that marriage sati hears about that 
and then sati convinces shiva to go to that wedding uh, go to that that ceremony shiva refuses sati says okay i shall go because you know my father my family has organized this grand celebration sati goes attends that function but in the entire function the father is taking care of all the guests everybody but he does not talk to sati about her well being or her husband's well being it is a extreme disrespect he shows to sati and shiva in fact he also says some not so nice words about shiva in that gathering sati is very pained to hear things not so nice things about her husband and she decides to end her life because she can't bear this pain of disrespect to her husband she gives her body as the story goes in the fire of the yajna in that fire ceremony she pours her body into that and gives away her life shiva hears about that enraged full of anger full of pain full of sadness he's a wild being he starts to dance like crazy like a madman which is called tandav in the mythology it says that when shiva does this mad ecstatic angry dance called tandav the whole world collapses all the devas from the heaven watches that and they are in trouble because they know that if shiva does that it will destroy the entire earth shiva then holds the body of sati on his shoulder and he's dancing the god vishnu comes and then the story goes he he has a discus and with his discus he cuts the body of the sati into 51 parts so that shiva is is rid of the body of the body of the sati shiva is rid of this pain this enormous profound pain and then the 51 pieces of the body of sati falls into 51 areas these are area, these are areas which are largely in asia just not india they are in bangladesh they are in nepal they are in chi china and there are few other places these are also called shakti peethas where we build enormous power centers of temples there anyhow the story goes that now shiva is lost sati she he's lost sati he is absolutely disinterested in this life he becomes a absolute recluse not talking to anybody not interested in this world anymore he sits in the mountain all alone in the snow to cool himself off then sati who's who's dead now takes another birth this time she takes the birth as the daughter of the mountains her name is parvati the daughter of parvat parvat is the mountains the mountain lords that's how she gets her name parvati she is in love with shiva again <laughs> old lifetimes of association what to do she is in love with shiva again but now she has become total recluse he won't look at anybody parvati then the gods tell parvati to do to deep penance do deep tapasya sadhana for eons together for shiva to please him parvati does that shiva gets pleased and finally shiva agrees to marry parvati again the family units come together now shiva is recluse uh, there is an interesting thing about this story the shiva is recluse he is wild he is he is sometimes horrible to look at fear it can generate fear in you to look at that image of shiva dreadlocks you know, serpents and and all kinds of insects moving around his body parvati the daughter of king finally marries shiva not just that she gets two son from shiva with shiva i would say not just that she also makes sure that shiva becomes more social <laughs> she has that power 
the Shakti, the energy, the Parvati, the Mother, the Divine, the Goddess, the Feminine has that enormous power to convert Shiva from a recluse, from a wild being to a societable man. Story goes Shiva, Parvati convinces Shiva to leave the abode in the Kailasha, the mountains and come down and settle in the cities, behave, live like normal human beings, be with his devotees, not up there all the time where devotees can't even reach him, be in the world, mingle with the people of the world, see their agony, feel their agony and then pour his love's love on, on the devotees. The Shakti does that. Shiva and Shakti which is Parvati, they finally come down from the mountains and settle down in the city of Banaras, Kashi. Varanasi, one city, three names. So Kashi becomes the new home, new abode for Shiva and Parvati. Why I am sharing this story with you? The, the story has multiple dimension. Primarily it shows us the, the power of Shakti. Her power of love and devotion is so intense, she can come back again. And, and marry Shiva again. And the power of love and devotion is so much that it can change even like even a being like Shiva. That's the enormous power of Shakti. That the Shakti can even change a being like Shiva, make him a human being, so to say, a being of this world. Yeah. Another another Example to, to show you again from the mythology. You know, there is a great book on meditation called Vigyana Bhairav Tantra. This book has 112 meditations which, which Shiva gave to the world. It is said that these are the only 112 meditations in the world and all the other meditations, if there are any, are derived from these 112. You cannot conceive or create any other form of meditation which is not in alignment with one of these 112 techniques of meditation. These are the techniques which Parvati got or somehow she, she I won't say manipulated, but she convinced Shiva to speak these 112 techniques to her. So actually Shiva gave these 112 meditation techniques of Vigyan Bhairav Tantra to Devi, to Parvati, to Shakti and through her then it kind of came to all of us. So she is the one. Whatever meditation that we are experiencing or doing attributes or, or we should be in gratitude, in thankfulness to the Devi, to Parvati because of her these meditations have come to us through any lineage that you follow. Yeah. So that's, that's another way of showing you the enormous power of Shakti.